Okay, so quickly, all we're going to do here is plug in one, then two, three, four, and five. Uh, have five terms then to add up. We're also going to see how we can short this up a little bit in the summation formulas. Okay. Um, so for one, let's do let's use one right away. Notice for each of these terms, these three terms, that they all have common factors of three times one third, right? Yeah. Uh, so from the beginning, we could have taken those factors out. Like every one of these is going to have a three times a one third. So we can take three out, a one third out, and then only deal with the part that actually varies. Uh, okay. Part that actually varies. Uh, and then we would have had three times one third. That kind of unfortunately worked out for one uh, times. One third squared plus two thirds squared plus three thirds squared. You can factor you can factor it out here or you can factor it out at the beginning. So here we have a four and a one fifth. Every term that we write down with one, two, three, four, five plugged in is going to have a factor of four and a factor a factor of one fifth. So we can just take the four fifths out of all the terms then add up the terms that actually change as we plug in these different variables. Uh, okay. Hey, you know what, we can do that a little bit more. We could actually just cube this out. Four fifths <coughs> I equals one to five. So two fifths cubed is gonna be eight over 125 x cubed, if we just cube this out. So then we have a common factor of eight over 125, so we can bring that out here. So we have 4 over 625, or sorry, uh, 32, 32 over 625 uh, times this sum. Right? I didn't expect you to remember that, but I'm just showing you how to make that a lot easier. Now only, it's only the variable that, that changes with each term. All the other stuff is the same. So we might as well take it out and multiply it through at the very end when you find the sum of the stuff that actually changes. Does that make sense? Okay, so we have these uh, we have these summation formulas, summation notation formulas. Okay, so if from the first term to the fifth term, I want to find the sum of the first five, the first five cube numbers, first five cubed numbers. Okay, I do it like this. This is thirty-two over six twenty-five. times this sum. Well, if we look in our books at page 260, two, two, you can see number four there is for the cubes, right? Mm -hmm. If you have just a term that's cubed, then you're just going to plug in one cube, two cubes, three cubes, four cubes, five cubes. No need to do all that. There's a formula here. It says we can just take n, okay, n is 5, right? 5 squared times 5 plus 1 squared over 4, 4, okay? If we're trying to add up the cubes, we just take this guy right here, as long as it's from 1 to 5, not from 0 to 5, not from 2 to 5, but from 1 to 5, we can take 5 squared, 5 plus 1 squared, divide by 4. That's going to find this sum. 32 times over 625, Times, let's see, you got 125 times, or sorry, 25 times 36 uh, over 4, let's see, 25 times 325, 325, 225, 225, 225, over 1, uh, 225, 625, they got a common factor of 5, 25. This is 5? No. No, 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 no. It's 25. Yeah. No, it's not. No, it's not. 25 times 25. It's not. It's 7? Is this 7? No, it's 5. Here's a 5 by 5. 
Eight. Eight. Yeah. Eight. Okay, that's good. Okay, so uh, 32 times 8 is Divided by 25 is 9, not 8. So we need to multiply 32 by 9. 9. There we go. Who lied to us? Okay. So we did do it right? I thought I was thinking. Yeah, we did. Nice. I keep from somebody who's not. Yeah, I do. Page 260, you can find this. Okay. If we look at. Here we go, right there. Here are the formulas. Guys, come on. Uh, here are the formulas right here. This is for cubed. If you're adding up a bunch of things that are cubed, uh, the first, uh, just not cubed, just the first power, the first n squares, those are the formulas. So I have a question yeah. with the two and three. When it's saying like, when it's saying i equals n then plus one over two, for the second summation formula. This one, this one? Yeah. What about it? So when it's saying like i, is it going to say like it's going to, it'll show i in the problem or it'll? No, so it has to just be. I or okay. X, but really, really I. Okay. You have to use those other things like you can separate them out into separate sums. Mm -hmm. You can take out constant multiples. Okay. It's definitely we're gonna get plenty of practice to that. But to get there, let's let's uh, move on to the next concept. Okay. Or really, the next question. Okay. Uh, so the the first question in calculus was. How do we find the slope of a tangent line? So now the second question of calculus that we know a whole lot of is for for a curve, what is say from here to here? What's the area under this curve? Oh my god! Sure. Yeah, we, we, we did like. So, for example, let's use this function from 0 to 1. This is negative x squared plus x. So, from 0 to 1, let's find the area under the curve. Okay? So, it sounds like you're remembering from last year we used rectangles, right? Yeah. And then we did what with those rectangles? Add them up. Use the summation the formula. Add them up and then to get the, to be better and better and better, we use the rectangles? Okay, so for those of you who don't remember, which is fine, let's start out with three rectangles. Okay? We'll make it easy on ourselves. We'll make them equal, make them equal width. And uh, we'll, we'll split this into three. Sub intervals. This is an interval from zero to one. So we're three sub intervals. So this will be one third, two thirds, and one. Okay. And we'll build a rectangle where the the top of the rectangle uh, is decided by where the right side would be the function. Okay. And this one is actually going to be the same height because it's right across from there. Right. It's this right side that decides how high the rectangle is. How high is this rectangle? It's, there's no rectangle really because the right side touches the x-axis. Which would make sense if there's an angle there. 
His left. Because there's added area on the left one that it kind of accounts for. Yeah, maybe it kind of balances that out a little bit. Okay. <coughs> well, what are we really doing? We're adding up three things. Okay. Well, how do we decide where, like, what we plug in? What the, the height of the rectangle is going to be? Now you plug the x into the function, right? So you take this one third, you plug it in there, right? you're gonna plug it right in there. You're gonna plug the two thirds right in there, okay? So you're really gonna take negative uh, i, really i over three, so that we maybe have one third, two thirds, and then one, right? Um, But we put it over three because in summation, summation notation we're going to plug in one, then two, then three. Oh. Because but what we want to do is we set out of all these rectangles which have uh, an x of one third, two thirds, and one. Okay. Okay. We're going to formulaize this a little bit. Um, so we'll take that and we'll square it. Square it plus i over three. First, okay. Well, what does this represent? That represents the, the function. rectangle. What about the rectangle? It's it's oh, no, that represents where you put the x <coughs> to make the rectangle that, right? It represents the just the height of the rectangle. Oh, right. Because we're gonna plug in one here. What's that gonna do? That's gonna do negative one third squared plus one third. Well, that's just like plugging one third into this function. And what happens when you plug one third into the function? You find the y value for one third. Okay. That's just the, the height, right? If we want to find the area of a rectangle, what do we need? Height times. Height times. Height. Height. Wait, you don't have any Yeah. How wide is, is this rectangle going to be? One third. What about this one? One third. What about this one? One third. Oh, so that's the convenient thing about making them equal width is we just get to say, well, we'll multiply this, the height, times one third, the width. Multiplies that by one third times, okay. Okay, we could plug in one and two and three into these, into this and make three different, uh, terms and add them all together, or we can use the summation formula. Question? So say instead of like, instead of the zero, one third, two thirds, and one, uh, say so we had zero, one, two, three, and then the width would be one over one, basically? Zero, one, two, three? Or no, like from how we have that, instead of the one third, that's a one, instead of the two thirds, that's a two, and then So this happened to be three here? Yeah, so it would be Then yeah, the width one. would be one. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's do this one real quick. Uh, well, we got this constant multiple of one third, so we'll pull this one third out here. Now, this big sum here, we could really view as the sum of all of these little terms plus all the sums of these little terms. We could separate them out, right? Because if we were to plug in one, two, and three, we would just have this with one in it, plus this with one in it, this with two in it, plus this with two in it, to this with three in it, plus this with three in it. Right? We could group all these terms together, add them up, we could group all these terms together, and add them all up. Or what I'm saying here is, we have a rule that says, if we have a sum of sums, we can just have two separate sums. Uh, this term, last so we can do summation notation, and this one. We're trying to ultimately break this all down so that we can use the summation formulas. Right? It might not seem that necessary when we only have three, one, two, three, but when we have five and twenty and infinity, then yeah, we're gonna want to do that. This is one.
one third times. Let's square this. Okay, actually, we put a negative out here. It's got a, a multiple of negative one, a negative right there. We'll square this out. We got i squared over nine. This one we could pull out of one third. And we'll pull out the one ninth, so we got negative one ninth out in front here. I squared. So this has a formula we can use for it. This has a formula we can use for it. And it's much easier. So negative one ninth times, okay? Two n of i squared. That's on page two sixty. That's n. What's n in this case? Three. Three, three is n. Three is the like the last term. So we go out to the third one. So we put three times three plus one times two times three plus times one. three plus one over six. Over six plus. This one, one third. This formula is n times n plus one over two. Three times three plus one over two. And this one third is way out there in front. <coughs> okay, and this might look messy, but yeah, if it's helping you not have to add up 20 terms, it's certainly a lot easier. So negative one ninth times, uh, let's see, let's cancel this uh, six with this three, this becomes a two. Right. This is really a four, right? So four cancels with two, this becomes a two. So we just have, this is all over one, so we just have two times seven, this is 14. This is a four, so four if we cancel with two, this would be a two, so this would be six. So it'd be one third times six. Uh, nine plus six divided by three is two. So one third times, I uh, get negative 14 ninths plus uh, 18 ninths, so we got four ninths. So you got four over uh, 27. What do we find here? What is this? Of? Area of one third. One third. One third. One third. One third. What? Yeah. Of what? It's the area of the underneath side of the function. It's the area of the rectangle. It's the area of, of these three, three so rectangles, right? This is a rectangle with, with no area. Well, what are we going to do to make this better? More rectangles. more rectangles, and therefore thinner rectangles. And the more rectangles we use, the more rectangles we use, the smaller they get. And this like this too much here, and this too little here gets to be less and less and less and less and less. Right? Okay. What would it look like to have but no. ten? Oh wait, never mind. I think it's remembered. Oh. Well, if if it's hard to visualize, let's just go. I don't know. I undo all that. Yes. Um, let's maybe move down here. We'll see what it looks like with ten rectangles. Stretch. Because you would just stop at the rectangle. Before what? Like the rectangle that you make before any other ones, you stop before you go past it. Which that's what I was confused about because I thought they all like hit <coughs> the y axis and I was wondering how that would be close to the right area. But uh -huh. I remember that. Let's go ahead and, and grab it real quick. Uh, this is 1, x is 1, x is 0. So it's nice to draw. We're going to have 
five on that side and five on this side, so it's kind of a drop. And then we'll try to split this up into five equal uh, so intervals here. Okay. So if we always use the right side, which is really convenient, we'll rectangle like this, and this one like this. And the right side of this rectangle will be right there, and the right side of this one will be right there, and this one there. Uh, this one like there. So we can do this with 10 rectangles, or 20, or 1 million, or however many. And the, the more we use, you can see, the less we're off by. Right? We're off by a little sliver there, and, and, and like too much and too little there, too much of a sliver there. That's almost the same as that one, not quite. Right? It's starting to kind of balance itself out. And if we go to infinity, infinity rectangles. So let's get there, but first we need to write something that we can let go to infinity. Right? What what number in this concept are we going to let go to infinity? Three. What, what number? number of rectangles. N. The number of rectangles. Oh, okay. Number of rectangles. So that'd be n. 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 Like in this expression, what what would be changing, and what would be staying the same? Because it's going to be very similar. Right, we're using the same function. Right? So what's going to be changing? What's going to be staying the same? I will stay the same. Everything I start to set one. Right? I will stay the same. I will never change. OK, so let's say that we're using 10 rectangles. Yeah. Right? So what's going to change about this? Uh, three. All the threes? All the threes. And this will be 10? Yeah. What else? Width. This, will this be 10? Yeah. This will, be 10. Will this will be 10. Yeah. This will be 10 because each of them are going to be 1 tenth wide. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's try and like make a process by which we could apply this to any function. Not just this function, but any function. Okay. okay. So we'll just generalize it for any function, f of x. Uh, we'll make it from a to b. And we want to find the area underneath the curve from A to B using lots and lots of rectangles. <laughs> We're going to uh, We're going to add up the areas of a bunch of rectangles. We're going to sum up a bunch of things. We're going to sum up from the first rectangle, the first, the area of the first rectangle, to which rectangle? The nth. The nth rectangle. And then we'll let n change for any number. Rectangles will be one. Okay? The nth rectangle. Okay, well, we know that we need, for the area of a rectangle, two things. What two things do we need? Height and the width. And the width. Oh, okay. F of x plus h. No, not exactly, but sort of. How do we find the height of each rectangle? Like we're going to go to some, let's say, right here. Okay. Let's imagine that this is an example rectangle, right? A little skinny one. Um, and let's say we're going to use the right side of it. So we'll call it x sub i, because it's the ith rectangle, right? Yeah. Maybe the first one, second one. Maybe this is like the, the 800. 800, yes. Okay. The 800th rectangle. And if you, if you think about it, i is, you know, it could be i, it could be i plus 1, i minus 1, because sometimes we have to adjust those things. But really, x sub i is appropriate, because the ith rectangle uh, should have the ith x value. Right. W is constant, right? Because if we let them, yeah, be the same width, then I, then, then, uh, then width would be constant. Yeah. Right. And then for height, it would be what you plug in for the x value on the right side, yep. which would be. It would just be like. 
real time and be like how far it is from that x to v. Mm -hmm. And then you subtract it that distance from the total distance from a to b, and then you would get the x point. Right. Sort of. Let's let's walk through it real step by step here. Okay. So Let's say this is an example rectangle. We get to this example rectangle. We want to find the height of the rectangle. How do we find the height of the rectangle? Plug in that x value. Plug in this x value. So we could write f of x sub i, right? But let's just say for now we're going to go back. This is too general, right? We need to be a little more specific. Uh, let's go to the width. What's the width of this rectangle going to be? Really? For all the rectangles. How could you calculate it for 10 rectangles? Divide by, divide by 10. Divide what by 10? A to B. A to the difference from A to B. So how do you find the distance a from A to B? Divided by. A to B, right? Yeah, but how do you find A minus B. B. A minus B. B minus A, because we're going to take the right side minus the left side. B minus A divided by. B minus A over N, right? 10 oh. or 12 or whatever. Whatever the number of rectangles is. <laughs> Let, let's take a step back so that I can explain something to you real quick. That's, that's correct. Uh, technically, what we call this is delta x, f of x sub i times delta x, right? The change in x. How much are you going to move over by a change in x? Okay? Uh, but then when we call it a really small change in x, we, we call it a dx. Okay? You see how we have a function times dx and how we're taking antiderivatives? And we have a function times a dx comes from here. Okay? It has its roots in that. We'll, we'll get to it soon enough. So what is delta x? Delta x, here let's let's write let's write that and then we'll just rewrite it more specifically. Let's see what that So i equals from the first rectangle to the nth rectangle. We've got the width. We know that we are gonna take the distance between d and a and divide by the number of rectangles. It's gonna give us the width of any rectangle because we're gonna let it be a constant, because that's Okay, so we know that if we want to find the height of this rectangle right there, we're going to plug in x sub i into f of x. But just like we took delta x and we made that width a constant by taking b minus a over, over n, definite we can plug all that stuff in. Um, how are we going to find where that, where that is? Where is that x sub i? Minus I? B minus X sub I. Well, X sub I is, is, is an X value right there. B is this like, so B minus X sub I would just give you this distance. We're trying to find where, like, where is this? How can I write this in terms of like uh, A and B and X and N? Is this where the H comes into play? Never an H. Let's say it this way. Let's say with the first rectangle. First rectangle. Remember, we're going to use the right side. Are we going to use A? No, we're going to use the right side. How far away is the right side from A? I. I. I? N. N. B minus A over N away, right? The width of one rectangle. Right? How far is the right side of the second rectangle? Uh, two times B minus A. And the no. third one? Three. So X. times b minus a over n. That's i is the number of the rectangle you're on. The first, the second, the third, oh, yeah. okay. b minus a over n is how wide that movement is, right? The delta x. Okay. So we're going to move over from a. We're going to start at a. We're going to move over. We're going to move to the right. We're going to move a plus. We're going to move over a width of a rectangle for every rectangle. We're going to move over this many widths from A. Yeah? Does that make sense? Real crucial here. Does it make sense or does it not make sense? Yeah. Right now it makes sense. Yeah, this is the same one. So now you're just explaining. Relearning. I explained it last time. Did you really? Yeah. 
It's okay though. That's why we're going over it again. So this is the height of a rectangle. This is the width of a rectangle. Okay. And this, you know, this will give me the height of any particular rectangle. The fifth one, the seventieth one, the eight hundred fifty-sixth one. I just plug that eight hundred fifty-six in there, uh, and I multiply it by. Well, if there's eight hundred fifty-six rectangles, this rectangle is going to be really thin because I'm going to take this distance and divide it by. Well, however many n is. So maybe it's the 856 rectangle, but there's a thousand rectangles in all. Okay? So we're taking that distance between b and a and dividing it by a thousand, which is really small. We take 856 really small things and add. Really so and is the total number of rectangles there mm -hmm. are an i and the number of Let's write that down. n total number of rectangles i number of the, let's say, like the current rectangle. Homework. Find this past one, then. Um, what is past one? All right. The homework up then, we're going to not lose our minds. It's going to be the opposite of what usually happens. And we're going to work out an example together. here is a, a parabola. It should look like this. You go one, two, three. You want to find the area between one and two. And we'll let the number of rectangles be infinity rectangles. So if we go back and we use this guy right here, Highlight it, copy it, and paste it. formulas to bring it down to a place applicable. Okay. Uh, so here's f of x. So we're going to plug in a plus b minus a over n times i into x. 
Okay. Uh, so we're going to let the sin plus n goes to infinity. Take an infinite, or a sum of an infinite number of rectangles from 1 to the nth one, to infinity v as 1. Um, it's going to go from a to b, from 1 to 2. Uh, so b minus a, or delta x, b minus a, so b, 2 minus 1 over n will be 1 over n. Okay. Um, I'm going to finish up this example um, during the first few bits of All right, so like I said, I was going to finish up this example uh, during lunch, so here I am. Um, let's see, so we're going to fill in the, the height and the width, right? Uh, so we just found delta x, that's the, the width of one rectangle, right? b minus a over n. So 2 minus 1, b minus a over n. We don't know what n is, we're going to let n get very big. So uh, there's the width, 1 over n. Um, 1 over n is also the width of the rectangle that we're going to move over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times whatever for the whatever rectangle that we're on. All right, sorry for that interruption. Um, all right, so for the height portion of these rectangles, uh, we're going to we would start at 1, and we would move over 1 width of the rectangle, 2 widths of the rectangle, 3 widths of the rectangle. For n is, or for i is 1, i is 2, i is 3, right? So what we're going to plug in to each of these x's is we're going to start at 1, and then we're going to go over a width of 1 over n, right? Uh, really skinny width if n is really big. If we had 100 rectangles, we'd move over 1 one hundredth uh, times i, whichever rectangle we're on. So if we're on the first rectangle, we'd move over 1 one hundredth. If we were on the second rectangle, we'd move over 2 one hundredths, uh, and then 3 and 4 and 5 and so on. Um, so we're going to plug this guy right here into x and this x, and that will give us the height for each individual rectangle if we were going to do this one by one. Uh, so negative uh, x, which is 1 plus, let's say, i over n squared plus 3 times, I'm going to move this over, and that out the room here, times 1 plus i over n. Now remember, I'm putting parentheses around this because this entire thing is the height of the rectangle, and this is the base of the rectangle, or the width of the rectangle. Uh, so we need the whole height times the width. Right, so now we're going to apply these summation formulas and um, clean it up so that we can apply the summation formulas, and then at the very end, we can let n go to infinity. All right, so we just carry this through. Uh, for one thing, uh, n is just the number of rectangles. It does not change. So it is a constant multiple that we can bring out in front here. We can also multiply it through if we wanted to. I, I, this is just what I uh, tend to do. Okay. Um, then inside here, uh, we need to square this parentheses, because what we're trying to do is get it to the point where we have summation of the i, of i squared, of i to the third if necessary. Um, so we need to multiply this all out, right? So that's 1 plus i over n times 1 plus i over n. So that's going to be 1. Uh, right, we're going to separate these out, too. It's going to be 1 plus uh, 2i over n, because if we were to distribute these together, we get 2i over n plus uh, i squared over n squared. Now keep in mind, this i is not the imaginary number i. I know that could be confusing, but this is not negative 1. This is not the square root of negative 1. This is not i, the imaginary number. Okay. Um, so now remember also that we could, uh, right now we have this 1 over n out here. We can split apart this as its own sum and then this as another sum. So plus this other sum. 3 times 1 plus i over n. Okay, so we took out that constant multiple of 1 over n. And we have parentheses around this whole thing because we also split apart this, this sum into two sums. Okay. Um, 
And now we have three different sums that will split into three different sums. Okay, so we have a, mm, let's call it, we'll distribute the negative and call it negative one. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Negative one, negative two i over n, and negative i squared over n squared. So we're going to have first this sum equals 1 to n of negative 1 uh, minus i equals 1 to n of 2i over n minus, these are minuses because we have minuses in front. We could also put this minus out in the front here, right? Um, minus sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared over n squared plus, okay, let's deal with this here. Um, let's pull out this constant multiple of 3. 3 times i equals 1 to n of 1 plus i over n. Okay, so we can start to use summation formulas. Uh, here on this one, uh, really what we're doing is we're going to put in a, a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 4 all the way to n, but all of those are just going to be 1s. None of that is going to be different. So we're just going to add up n 1s, so that's going to be 1 times n. So that part is just going to be n. Uh, negative n, negative n. If you look at the summation for the summation rule for constants, you'll find that. Okay. Um, minus. Uh, now we'll take this constant multiple of 2 over n. Remember, n is just the number of rectangles that didn't change, so we can pull that out as a constant multiple, 2 over n times, and we'll rewrite the sum. That's just going to be i is left there. We can pull out the 1 over n squared here, so 1 over n squared. We got i squared there, plus 3 times, and we can split apart these two sums, so we have sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 plus sum i equals 1 <coughs> to n of i over n. Okay. And in this step, I'm just going to, real quick, take that out. I'm going to take that constant multiple out of 1 over n. I'm just left with i there. Make sure to keep all your parentheses straight. Remember, we pulled out this 1 over n at the very beginning, and then we split apart these two sums. OK, so this 1 over n is still way out in the, the, the very outside of these parentheses. Uh, and then like for this one, we pulled out a constant multiple of 3, and then split apart these two sums. So that we still have this 3 times, all this stuff. So just keep those things in mind. We used a, a formula here. There's a formula for this one. It's n times n plus 1 over 2. So this is 2 over n times n times n plus 1 over 2 minus this one here. This is 1 over n squared times the summation formula for this one is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Uh, I'm just going to double check. Yeah, that's correct. Um, 3 times this guy right here. This is just going to be n again. We're just adding up n ones. So that's just going to be n. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. n times it's going to be n. Plus 1 over n times the, the formula for this is n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay. Give ourselves a little more room. Um, so again, as n goes to infinity, what we're going to wind up doing is uh, is like we have with rational exponents or, or uh, rational uh, functions, uh, where we compare the degree of the numerator, denominator, and uh, all that kind of stuff, and end behavior. Um, if that rings a bell, that's what we're going to wind up doing here. But first, we have to put everything together here, and we got to distribute the three into here, the one over n into here, the one over n into this whole thing, and so on. So we'll just plug away there. Negative n minus, well, this n and this n can cancel each other out. This 2 and this 2 can cancel each other out. 
So we can just do n plus 1. That's nice. Um, minus, okay, this n and this n can cancel each other out, so that's nice. So we get n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6 plus, okay, uh, we'll just leave the 3 out here for a second. n can cancel with n, we get n plus 1 over 2. Here, let's see, a negative 2n plus 1 minus, uh, let's say, 2n squared plus 3n plus 1, just multiplying these together, or 6 plus uh, 3n plus 3n plus 3 over 2, just distributing that 3 to everything there. And now we've kind of dealt with parentheses in here, we can distribute this 1 over n. And if you, if you want to get like a common denominator and put all these together, you can do that. Um, but in the end, when we let n go to infinity, we can see that that won't be necessary. Right. So let's distribute this one over n. So we get negative 2n over n uh, plus 1 over n minus uh, 2n squared plus 3n squared uh, plus 1. Um, let's see. All right, as it will happen with these, I noticed that when I, uh, when I moved from this step to this step, I had one over n squared here, and then I used the summation formula, but I forgot n squared here. So only one of these got canceled out, and we're still left with an n. There's one factor of an n here, and it can't cancel out with one of these factors of n, so we have, should have a 6n down here. Six n. So all this is over 6n plus 3n over n, when you distribute this one over n in there plus 3n plus 3 over 2n. Okay, so now we're at the stage where we can say uh, what happens if n goes to infinity. Uh, so as this, as this n goes to infinity, we can even just cancel these n's and we see that we're going to wind up with a negative 2. This one, as n goes to infinity, n is going to become very large, 1 divided by a very large number. That, that limit as, that goes to in, as n goes to infinity for this term would be 0, so that's nothing. Um, and let's see. Uh, oh, okay, and then what I should have here is we distribute the 1 over n to here, which gets 6 over n squared, or 6n squared. So we remember that if the degrees are the same, then uh, as n goes to infinity, we approach the limit of or we approach the ratio of, of these two guys here, these leading coefficients. So we have a minus one-third, if we simplify that. This one will have, this will be a three. Uh, this one will have, uh, this will approach three halves. Okay, we add those all together, and we get to go. So we have um, a common denominator of six, so this is uh, 12 sixths minus uh, two sixths plus 9 six, or plus uh, uh, 18 six, my mistake, 18 sixths, plus uh, 9 sixths. Okay, so negative 12 six minus 2 six, negative 14 six, plus 18 six is 4 sixths, plus 9 six is 13 sixths. Okay. Um, I know that can be difficult to follow. I have other examples up that you can check out on the, uh, the other playlist. It's just normal um, sample problem videos. So check that out as well. There's also probably some in pre-calc uh, that you can look for there, summation notation formulas. Um, but, uh, and of course, we'll, we'll go over this in class as well. So uh, thanks for watching.